So you're ready to take the dive into at-home custom apparel production. Congratulations. Now, if you are new to the direct-to-film printing process, make sure you stick around. And if you're already DTFing, hang out with us too. This is gonna be a fun one. Stay on here with All America Print Supply, and in this series, we're gonna cover all the most important things to keep in mind as you traverse your DTF journey, except for the film. Here on this channel, we've broken down all the fundamentals of the film portion of DTF, and you can take a look at all the episodes here. This is not a vinyl cutter. This is not a sublimation printer. This is definitely not a white toner laser printer. But before we dive into it, go ahead and drop a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave that section below. I'm gonna say the main reason direct-to-film has been so successful in our industry over the past few years has definitely been the element of white ink. This is what's gonna allow us to print colors onto any color material and still get accurate values. Without this, we would not be able to print onto dark fabric. So let's take a look at it. Let's say we were to put blue ink directly onto a yellow shirt. It may come out more of a green. Now, if you have a white base layer, blue will look like blue no matter what color material you're printing on. This is probably the main difference from sublimation printing, which is the CMYK process. We following along so far? White ink, important. So one of the main differences between white ink and the CMYK colors is this is gonna be much thicker and more opaque. This is necessary so we can layer on top all the CMYK so you can get accurate color values. Now to achieve this pigment, actual titanium dioxide is used. Now what does that mean? Well, if you've ever painted a kitchen, and you've seen the little skin that forms on the top of the paint can, that's the separation of the ink and the titanium. Now in contrast, with sublimation ink or inkjet printing, which is a CMYK process, there is no white ink element. So that's gonna rely on either the paper or the substrate to provide that white backing. You get it so far? It is because of this element that a good directive film printer will have a means of maintaining a solid mixture between the titanium and the actual pigment. Now we need to make sure that these are separated properly so they can flow through the lines evenly. Just like the skin on the top of the paint can, the ink can separate. And this can result in clogging of the lines, or worse yet, our print head. So a good machine will have a means of maintaining a solid mixture where everything can flow through smoothly. This is called the WIMS, or White Ink Management System. The main functions of the WIMS system are gonna be circulation and agitation. By continuously circulating the white ink through the lines of the machine, it doesn't really give it a chance to separate, and we can really easily prevent sedimentation. Now as far as agitation, these machines are equipped with a motorized agitating stirring straw, which will continuously stimulate the ink, again, further preventing any of that separation. We don't want anything clogging our printhead. Now there are some best practices we need to mention when it comes to loading your white ink into your printer before any actual production. Now what you're gonna wanna do is agitate the heck out of the bottle until you can hear the bubbles beginning to develop. Now if you're ready to start production before you actually load the ink, what you're gonna wanna do is crack the lid just a little and begin to let it aerate. This will help prevent any kind of separation and give you the most fluing white ink possible. Now, if you are gonna be storing your ink in between refills, after you've agitated the heck out of it and gotten those bubbles, it's gonna be advised to set the ink upside down. This will allow a natural circulation of the oxide, of the pigment, and have everything kind of flowing through together. Now furthermore, when it does come time to actually load the white ink into the reservoir, before you power on, it's gonna be advised to stir the white ink. And this can be done with a popsicle stick or the back end of perhaps of one of your included cleaning swabs. This will ensure to make sure that when you put the ink into your machine, it's ready to go. Because if you put bad ink into your printer, no matter how good your white ink management system is, you're not gonna get a good white. It is for all these reasons and more that it's very important we follow all the maintenance steps with our direct-to-film printer. What I'm saying by that is make sure opening and closing procedures are followed to the T. And if your machine is gonna be neglected for a while, we have a long-term storage mode solution so we can return back to a happy and functioning printer. Make sure you guys subscribe for further installments of our DTF Bootcamp as we break down all the key elements you need to keep in mind to have a happy printer and a successful teacher business. If you have any questions on anything we've covered in today's video, we've got the comment section down there for that. If you made it this far, drop some thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you never miss any of our awesome content. My name is Esteban, we're all American Print Supply. We'll see you on the next one.